one of the major differences is lack of in-depth analysis on your managerial style. Now, let me tell you, on your inaugural day, you made a pronouncement that I am removing the subsidy, fuel subsidy. So now, do you know the pain that has caused? The moment he made that statement, we started seeing queues in petrol stations. When my boys came back, they said, sir, now they are selling petrol at 488 naira per liter. I said, what? How, what was the price? Just that statement. That is not a super manager. A manager would have done an analysis, the impact on the people. What do you think public office is defined for? In any political class, public office is defined as the management of the resources of the land for the benefit of the people. Now, if he has thought through this, you know, thoroughly, the impact he will have, how do I assuage the pain? What would I do to reduce, to ameliorate the pain this will cause on the people who gave me the mandate to manage the resources of their country for them. And so it comes to what I'm saying. If you, maybe because I was in the military, do you think they will give me maybe about 100 boys for an operation that, which can claim the lives of every one of them or some of them, that I'm to take them for an operation? And you wouldn't have sat down to go into in-depth analysis. What are the uh, factors leading us there? What are the, uh, uh, the, the, the instruments, the powers that they have that we don't have? What are the intelligence reports? What are these? What are that? You would sit down. This is where I said we have our differences. I don't. I had been in public office since the age of 42. I was a military governor of two states now, the old Ondo state. You mean to have gone there? I wish I could bring the reports of the then president, uh, 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 my, my big boss, General Babangida, when he visited Ondo state, what he read, what he, what he wrote as commendation. You don't go to public office and think it, you are there to manage the resources of the people for your benefit, for your daughter, for your child, for your son, for your wife, and your family members. That is absolutely incorrigible. You can't do that. The essence, and we were in the military. We were not voted in, we, but we needed. There was a, 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 a systemic way by which we were able to govern. Because there was not the, uh, the, the legislative arm of government under military administration. But you must positively impact on the people because you are managing the resources for their benefit. And so this is where we differ. You just don't wake up, slam dunk a policy that has not been well thought of. So what other differences are we talking about? Those are the issues that I'm, that, that I'm saying. Think through. Get all your, your, your eggheads. Get all your, 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 your team. Look at the issues. Let them give you the papers. The impact. How do you ab ab avoid pitfalls? How do you avoid some, some uh, a nuisance value as you journey through that place? It's not a matter of sitting down there and it's, uh, you don't care what happens. You have to care. Because you, you, you campaign, you beg the people, please trust me. That's, that's all it is. When you are campaigning, you are saying, please trust me that I will manage your resources for your benefit. That is the essence of it. And that's why we are saying, let the will of the people prevail. How do you get the will of the people to prevail? A proper electoral process. When people go to the polls, we are saying, 
I've listened to the, this campaign. This is the man I believe can manage the resources of my state for my benefit. But what are we finding? Manipulations of the papers, of the resource sheets, and all that. So they emerge not having any concern whatsoever to the people. So these are the major areas of separation. That's all. And I will say it to his face. I will say it anywhere. Because it's, it is negatively impacting on this country. I was born here. I grew up here. I went to school here. This country trained me. We got to put something back. Each time I look back, at the time I was growing up in that Lagos Island, there was sanity there. There was, there was the communion living in that place. The fear of God was, was our centerpiece. But you go there now, totally, totally confused. I mean, I, and I'm still living through that. It, 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 it gives me so much pain in my heart. This is, this is the state? Is this what we are, we are living for this future generation? No, no. We got to do something much better than this. Look at little Rwanda there. The head of state had completely transformed that nation. With all these people, even if you meet somebody at the airport, what he will tell you about his nation, you, you, you will be so happy for them. That is what we want. Everybody is crying. It's not a matter of tribal issues now. This nation is drifting. It's taking in so much water. As a seaman, you know, if your ship is taking in so much water and you don't quickly arrest it, you go below the sea. Sorry. That's not what we want. Yes, sir. That great country, that, 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 that a, a nation that, you know, the giant of Africa. Yes. For every 10 Nigerians, seven are uh, for every 10 Africans, Seven are Nigerians. Go to anywhere in the world, in any profession, you will find our people. So what the goddamn hell is wrong with us at home? We need prayers, and we need committed people. We can still salvage it.